Hey guys, today we're going to look at mass in the mole. So the molecular weight of a molecule is calculated by adding the atomic weights in atomic mass units, or AMU, of the atoms in the molecule. So this is going to sound really silly when I explain it, but you literally just take the number of atoms of each type and add them up. So H2O has the mass of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So H has a mass of one, but there are two of them in the problem. O has a mass of 16, and there's only one of them. So I set them up like this so I can do a little bit of multiplication. 1 times 2 is 2. 16 times 1 is 16. And then I'm going to add those two numbers up. H2O has a total mass of 18 atomic mass units. So pretty simple, right? So here are a couple practice problems. Carbon dioxide is CO2. C has a mass of 12 and there's one present. O has a mass of 16, and there are two present. So 12, 32, CO2 has a total mass of 44 atomic mass units. Al2O3, Al has a mass of about 27, we're going to round, and there are two of them. O has a mass of 16, and there are three of them. So 27 times 2 is 54, 16 times 3 is 48. Add those two numbers up, and our atomic mass for Al2O3, or aluminum oxide, is 102 atomic mass units. Now these two examples have parentheses, so we're going to treat the parentheses a little bit differently. This BaOH2 has the two outside the parentheses, so we're actually going to distribute that in. So barium has an atomic mass of 137, and there's only one present. Oxygen has an atomic mass of 16, and there are two present. And hydrogen has an atomic mass of one, and there are two present. So 137, 32, and two. And when I add those up, my atomic mass for BaOH2 is 171 atomic mass units. Now this example with the parentheses, there is no number outside. Since there is no number outside, I'm going to leave everything inside alone. So calcium has an atomic mass of 40, and there's only one present. Sulfur has an atomic mass of 32, and there's only one present, and oxygen has an atomic mass of 16. There are four present, so 40, 32, and 64. And when I add all of these up, I have an atomic mass of 136 atomic mass units. Now, if there was in fact a number out here, and I'm gonna write that in green, hypothetically there was a two, then I would distribute that two, and I would actually have two sulfurs and eight oxygens. But since that's not out there, that isn't necessary. In the first unit, I introduced the idea of the mole. And the mole is a unit of measurement in chemistry that stands for a certain number of atoms present in a sample. And I said it was similar to saying that we have a dozen eggs, because when I say the term dozen, everyone thinks automatically of 12. So the mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms. We've already converted with this, but now I want to take those conversions one step further. So again, this slide should be a review because we did cover this in the first unit. A mole of any substance has that 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules in that substance. We use this conversion factor to turn moles into molecules. So as a review, if I have 6.5 moles of water, and I set this up as a dimensional analysis problem, 6.5 moles goes over a 1, and my next section, my next fraction bar, since moles is on top here, I want 1 mole on the bottom here, and that 6.022 times 10 to the 23 on the top. Since this is set up and both numbers are on the top, I do want to multiply across, and I have a total number of 3.91 
times 10 to the 24 molecules in that sample. Molecules. And we can go the other way also. How many moles are in 4.57 times 10 to the 25 molecules? The number that I give you goes over one. Our second fraction bar, since this is molecules, our 6.022 should be on the bottom. So our molecules cancel and one mole should be on the top. So when we do this problem, you're actually going to be dividing. And we have a total number of 75.8 moles. So this slide should also be a review. We've already done this in class, so this is not new information. But we are going to put this together to make something new. The molar mass in grams of one mole of compound is equal to the molecular weight of the compound according to the periodic table. The molar mass of one mole is equal to the periodic table. So for example, we determined that CO2, carbon dioxide, had an atomic mass of 44 atomic mass units. What this statement is saying is that the molar mass of one mole of CO2 is 44, just like it was using the periodic table. We are going to use that information along with the equation number of moles equals sample mass over molar mass. And we do this because in a lab, we are not going to count the number of moles of molecules that we have. We are going to count the number of grams of molecules that we have. So if we're doing an experiment, we can say I have 2 grams of CO2. I have 2 grams of NaCl. I'm not going to say that I have 6.75 times 10 to the 23 molecules. So this makes that number of moles more concrete in terms of usage in a laboratory setting. This equation is going to be one that we use the rest of the year. It's not going to go away. Eventually I'm going to abbreviate it a little bit because I get tired of writing it, but this equation will be one that you will have memorized, not because I force you to, just because you use it so often. So let's determine the number of moles of CO2 that are present in 4.54 grams. So we're going to use that same equation. Number of moles equals sample mass over molar mass. Number of moles is our question mark. Sample mass and molar mass are two variables that we can always find or we're solving for one of them. Our sample mass in this scenario is actually the 454 grams. Our molar mass is what we found on the periodic table. So that's the fact that C had a mass of 12, two O's had a mass of 32, 12 plus 32 is 44. So our molar mass you can always use the periodic table to find it. Every time, no matter what, as long as you know the chemical formula. So going back to our equation, number of moles equals 454 over 44. Number of moles equals 10.32. So a sample of 454 grams is 10.32 moles of CO2. Determine the mass in grams of 3.6 moles of H2SO4. So again, same equation. Number of moles equals sample mass over molar mass. This time, the number of moles is given as 3.6. My sample mass is my question mark. And my molar mass, we are going to use the periodic table to find. So H has a mass of 1, and there's two of them. S has a mass of 32, and there's one of them. 
O has a mass of 16 and there's four of them. So 2, 32, and 64. And that's a mass of 98. So our molar mass is 98. 3.6 equals sample mass over 98. In order to rearrange to solve for sample mass, I actually have to multiply both sides. Those cancel out. And my sample mass is 3.6 times 98, which is 352.8 grams. So in order to have 3.6 moles of that substance, I have to have 352.8 grams of that substance. So this is what we're going to spend tomorrow on determining how many grams are present or how many moles are, or are present of a specific substance. When you come into class, we are going to use that sample mass over molar mass equation and the periodic table in order to answer unknowns. I'll see you then.